not actually through the winter, but that you can rotate things, you know, and, and I think that's the way it will go once we have a once we have an iPhone which is in 3D, which I think is not very far away, then we'll start to see all that stuff in 3D on, on the iPhone and the I, on the iPad. Um, but I, mean, I don't think we're even approaching what Keystone and Underwood and Underwood did in, in around 1900, you know, where schools were full of stereoscopic uh, apparatus. Oh, yeah, I, I, there's, a one, there's a wonderful image that I've used in uh, slideshows for children at schools at, and uh, libraries. And it shows a schoolroom around 1890, and on the desk of every kid, and there's 30 kids or more in this classroom. They each have a stereoscope on the desk. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, it, what, as a physicist, um, I'm I'm curious about how you see uh, the stereo, this, the connection between what's going on with the new thought in physics, whether it's the, the boson Higgs, Higgs particle or dark matter and its relation to stereography. Well, astronomers... <laughs> he, he just gives the easy questions to me. <laughs> astronomers definitely love stereo, you know, and there are an awful lot of astronomers who are, who are addicted to it. And we have, for instance, the, the stereo um, experiment, uh, which is two satellites in the same orbit as the Earth. I don't know if you guys, you probably know about this. But they put up two satellites very cleverly, one in front of the Earth in its orbit and one behind in its orbit. And of course you get a stereo image by combining the two. It's a little odd because, because of the dynamics of, of orbits, um, the two satellites are getting further and further away from the Earth. So if you can imagine, they're now getting to the point where they're almost around the back of the sun. So you're, getting, you're not getting proper stereo images from them anymore, but they will cross over and come back around and we'll, we'll get our stereos. But a, a lot of astronomers, you know, you, you get a lot of um, anaglyph uh, stereo images from, from NASA now, and, and very often they put out um, material which other people can make into stereos, like me. I spend a lot of my time sort of dredging through the, the images that are available, very kindly, by NASA and ESA, and you can find two images, for instance, of some comet, uh, or an asteroid, and they just make the perfect 3D. So I, I, I sort of, I'm a sort of parasitic um, animal living off other people's uh, intentional <laughs> or unintentional uh, stereoscopic pairs. Well, I, uh, surely you've seen the, uh, the stereo pairs of the sun, and what's uh, intriguing and wonderful uh, is that the, the baseline, the stereo, the stereo. Uh, baseline is something like 150,000 miles, uh, and um, that the IMAX CD film uh, using the Hubble similarly has a baseline created by traveling uh, at light speed, measurable in parsecs. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen my um, this is advertising again, but I have this little series of stereo cars which we're selling here, and it, it's a selection of things like that that I've done. And of course your baselines can come from all different uh, sources. You know, in the case of the moon, you don't have to go out of your back garden, you just sit there for a while. And because of this phenomenon, which is called libration, the moon actually doesn't sit always with its same face towards you, it wobbles around. So you just choose your moments, both at the same phase, and you can make a beautiful stereo pair of, of the moon. And this was done about 1868 for the first time. And it's, it's still great, you can do it better now because optics are better. Isn't it? Uh, in the case of the sun, you have these satellites. You know, in the case of a lot of uh, astronomical objects, you have orbiters who have gone out there and, and, and gone around these objects, so you can keep your, your base signs from there. Um, but there's all kinds of ways. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the Hubble telescope. The Hubble telescope all the time takes pictures of the planet Saturn, you know, our favorite stereoscopic object. So you've just got to pick a couple of uh, moments that, that Hubble was pointing at, at Saturn, and you get a beautiful stereo effect. So one of those one of those is in the car series that I've been, uh, that I've been peddling here. <laughs> Do you have a 3D TV? I have a 3D TV. Uh, what, what, which one may I ask? Oh, God. What is it? It's, uh, it's passive. It's uh, Polaroid. I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the make of it. Um, it's the LG? It's an LG. You're yes, right. I, I have an LG, which I worship daily. You do. <laughs> 55 inch, 240 hertz, and uh, 
I marvel at how efficiently it delivers. It's their... very good, yeah. The programming is not very um, plentiferous. You know, so what I do is I set my recorder just just um, pick out the good bits because you get a couple of good things every week if you're lucky. And, um, the, the content seems to be following the technology, and it's, it's rather behind uh, the, the, the proliferation of displays. It is. I mean, I, I don't know if this is true for every stereo channel, but for Sky 3D, they set their own limits very fine, so they will not show a film like coming at you. They won't show any of those films where things are extreme, because they can't get them into a form which they think will not give you a headache. So that's one. The other reason is that these things are very hard to get. You'll notice in the film that we made, we're referring to all these lovely films like House of Wax and Dial in for Murder. You cannot get them. People will not give you footage from them. You know, in some cases, I was able to get, you know, maybe nine seconds of, of something. And you'll notice these little bits. You know, the, the Toy Story people were very helpful, but most people will not give you their footage. And I don't know why that is. Because it would be nice. I would have thought it would. Be Good, uh, you know, promotion for them, but we couldn't get a lot of that stuff. So we, we really had to compromise a lot. I see that changing by the end of this year. I think we can expect uh, House of Wax and Battle Land for Murder on Blu-ray for you. That would be so fabulous. Yeah. And that could just be the start of repurposing um, the 50s films, all of the pre-existing stereo, going back hopefully to the very beginnings uh, in 1938. Absolutely. You'll notice in some cases where we did get clips, they were done very small, and the reason for that is that if you reduce everything down, you reduce the z-space as well, you know, so you reduce the headache factor. That's the only way we could get them through Sky 3D's um, detective agency. You think, <laughs> you think that will change? I think the TV um, content delivery channels, um, I think they may have uh, great sensitivity to the idea that uh, there's a public health issue involved. Yeah, I think there is a real public health issue, which is quite, which is just about significant, but I think there is a massive perceived um, issue there. You know, I think there's a lot of kind of hypochondria goes on. Yeah, cause, I mean, if it's giving you a headache, you can switch it off, for God's sake, you know. <laughs> I think there is a point where, you, where you're being too careful. Do you see the, uh, the use of stereo in uh, the movies, the current movies, whether they're digital or live action, uh, as sufficient 3D, or uh, you see it developing as an art form uh, adequately? I think it's getting better and better. I mean, I, I, you must have all seen Hugo. Did you think, I mean, to me, that's a masterpiece. And, um, I, I know a lot of people who are involved in making that film, and they vastly overspent, they overran, you know, and it will never make money, even though it's one of the biggest films in history, uh, films in history. But to me, it's a masterpiece, and, and I think people, all these wonderful um, stereoscopists or stereo cameramen or, or whatever you call them, are just materializing, you know, wonderful stereo editing. I don't know where they're all coming from, but, but I think the stuff that's being made now is fabulous. Do you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Hugo and Pina in 3D are my two favorite yeah, of yeah, the recent absolutely. films. Yeah. Uh, but, but Hugo, particularly, um, the wonderful retelling of the contributions and life of George Melies uh, makes me I think similarly of Freeze Green and his um, continuous attempt to innovate and um, the, his failure, the, the tragedy of uh, the end of his life and uh, you know how he collapsed at that meeting of the producers in, in Britain. He was honored as a national hero, but. Uh, I see a real connection between free screen and Melies and the early innovation attempts to innovate and then what subsequently happened. Interesting, yeah. I knew Freeze Green's grandson, actually, I think he's still around, Tim Freeze Green, was a studio engineer and he worked on the first Sex Pistols album and he helped on some of our other movies. Uh, so that was a failure as well. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> have, have you seen the film The Magic Box, the biography of Freeze Green? Oh, oh. It's, it's a marvelous uh, biographical film based on the uh, Alistair uh, biography of him. It, it was made for the Festival of Britain in 1951, shot by the great uh, cameraman Jack Cardiff in uh, Three Strip Technicolor. And it's, it's a very poignant tale that uh, uh, relates the story of his uh, continuous attempt to innovate and his ultimate failure. Ray, can I ask you a question? 
Of course. Where would you like to see stereoscopy and stereoscopic filmmaking going in the next few years? I would like to see a more dynamic use of uh, stereo as a transformative uh, cinema. That is to use the technology in ways that haven't even been imagined. Uh, we have a few examples, say The Wizard of Oz when it goes from black and white into color. That's a moment that I describe as transformative. Um, you could add 3D to that mix and you could tell a story from the point of view of different characters, even an animal, uh, and create a much more empathic narrative using these technical, technological moments and shifts. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So, I, 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 they're riveted, you know. I, I, 